Okay, so we're going to do a, a quick demonstration here of automation, okay, which some of you know how to do, some of you don't know how to do. I'm also going to incorporate some uh, quick demonstration of uh, basic EQ filters, what you can do with things. So I've got this little uh, two bar repeating loop that I've set up here. So if I hit return and hit play, no, I have to actually get into the logic. Right, this brilliant composition that I've come up with, okay. Okay, so this is my uh, using my two sampler instruments, my voice sampler instrument, my drum sampler instrument, okay. Uh, and if I want to add some variation to this, okay, what is it? You, you see these virtual regions here, right? This is because I've, I've created a loop, okay. I can click the loop button and I can specify a certain number of loops. I can also, if I have the pointer tool on, and I've figured out I can do this here. Ooh, look at that zoom in, okay. Uh, the pointer tool, okay. I can actually grab this upper right hand corner and extend it as many times as I want. So it's a really easy to loop things inside of Logic, okay. But the thing with virtual copies is that you once you make a, 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 a change to the original, it changes all the copies, okay. So you want to, I think I covered this before, you want to actually take these loops and convert them to real copies, okay. That's what you want to do. And if you do that, You'll see that these virtual grayed out copies become actual fit, uh, real copies. They're, they're more filled in, okay? That means you can actually work with them independently, okay? So going back to my track here, okay, I want to add some effects processing to this. Maybe I want to solo the track. That's what this S button is for, so I can hear just this track. Okay, great. There's me saying noise over and over again, okay? Um, over here on your mixer, Let's see, this is a little cramped, but let me see. I'm not sure why that's so cramped. Maybe if I expand my, there we go. Okay, over here on my mixer, okay, I've got inserts, just like we had in Logic. I showed you some basic insert plugins inside of uh, Pro Tools. You can do the same thing here in Logic, and some of the ones that will give you kind of the most bang for your buck are the single band EQs. So under EQ, single band, and I got to this menu by simply clicking on the square EQ, single band, okay. Um, the two that I want to highlight today are high cut and low cut, okay. High cut cuts out the high frequencies, low cut cuts out the low frequencies. Uh, if you've listened to any form of electronic dance music, you've heard these time and time and time and time again. You just maybe didn't realize what they actually were, okay. Let's start with uh, high cut because there's actually quite a bit of high, well no, excuse me, start with low cut. I did that backwards. Single band, low cut. Okay, because there's actually quite a bit of high frequencies in my voice sample, and I want to actually cut out more of the lows and make it even more higher, tinny, thin sounding. Okay, and I, my clock. Let me make sure I can see my clock. Ooh, I got to keep going here. Okay, uh, I want to actually cut out more low frequencies. So now when I hit play, I maybe need to turn up. Okay. So that's, if I turn it all the way down, I'm getting all the frequencies. Basically, this 20 hertz represents the cutoff frequency. Everything below this is being cut out. Everything above this is passing through. So if, it, if it's at 20 hertz, you know that it's actually letting pretty much everything that we can hear through, right? So if I raise this, Okay, my voice is changing. I'm getting less of the low frequencies and just the high frequencies. Okay. So I kind of like that effect. Okay. I like that effect so much that I want to automate it. Okay. So I can cut the uh, close this. Okay. If I want to automate it, I just simply hit A. And that reveals the automation display inside of Logic in the Arrange window. And if I click on where it says Volume, I can go over here to the Low Cut Frequency. I can actually change that frequency over time. Okay, so if I'm in my pointer tool, I simply click and add points. And maybe I want to start here, but I want to end up over there. Let's hear what this sounds like over two measures. Noise, 
Okay, everybody hear the change there? Now it's getting thinner over time, okay? And I can do the reverse if I want to make more copies, okay? Um, I can do the opposite down here with my drums. So I'm going to unsolo this track, I'm going to solo this track, my drums, okay? Uh, I just did a low cut. What do you think the opposite? Uh, you've already seen it. What's the opposite of low cut? High cut, okay? So I go to plugins, EQ, single band, high cut, okay? Uh, now, if I sol now that I've got my drums soloed, everybody hear what high cut does? It gives do this kind of fuzzy underwater sound, maybe. Okay. Okay. So now again, maybe I want to automate that. So I come down here where it says volume. Click on high cut. Click on frequency. Okay. Uh, maybe I want to start really low with this really lo-fi sound and I want to gradually add some frequencies back in, okay? I can also, once I've got this uh, created, and this is something I didn't plan on showing you, but if I click on the pointer tool, there is something here called automation curve tool, okay? If I click on that one, I can actually grab this curve and bend it and flex it. So maybe that sounds better than that or that, okay? You kind of have to move your cursor around to see what it sounds like, but maybe a parabolic curve sounds better than a linear curve, okay? Let's see. Okay, now with the automation curve tool. Okay, now I've got all these good affected tracks, right? But what happens if I want to unaffect the track before I affect the track? Right? I want an unaffected version, then I want an affected version. Okay, um, the way that you, the, the best way to do that is to actually have two copies of the track. Okay, to actually duplicate the track, so you have one with your affected signal chain, the other one with your unaffected signal chain, or have two with two different affected signal chains, one with a high cut, one with a low cut, one with some other effect that, you, that you've dropped on the the track. Okay, the easiest way to duplicate a track is to simply click on it. Okay, you can go to track, new with duplicate setting, and you'll see there's a keystroke associated with that, Apple D or Command D, okay. That is actually going to duplicate the track here, and you probably want to get in the habit of, as soon as you do that, renaming those, okay. Or I'll just say this is a dry. Sometimes people use the adjectives dry and wet to convey uh, affected versus unaffected, okay. So there's my dry version. I'm going to actually then on this number, this one, actually go in here and undo this plugin, which gets rid of my automation. Okay. And then if I go back to my affected drums, okay, this is my FX, okay, track, I can actually take these real copies that I've made. Let me get out of automation by hitting A. Okay. I'm going to drag this one down here. And it's going to ask me if I want to move my automation. I'm, I don't want to move my automation. I want to pull this one back up. So now I've got an unaffected repetition and then I've got an affected repetition. So you hear how it kicks in there on the second repetition? Okay. So that's where we want to. Uh, that's, that gives you kind of the option of adding effects automating effects and also bypassing effects okay those are the three things I want to make sure you know how to do um, don't forget as well that you can automate volume and panning okay so if I go back to volume if I want something to just simply fade in I go to my automation again by clicking A is how you turn automation on and off okay if I click on volume I can add in points and add a fade in okay if I click on panning, I can also pan things from left to right. Okay, zero is going to be dead center, but negative 64 is going to be left, or should be left. Let me see if I add a point here. Let me see if I can make some crazy panning action here. Okay, so now my voice should actually move back and forth between the speakers. Hear it moving? Okay. That's everything I wanted to show you. That's automation in a nutshell. I, I mean, I just showed you four or five different things you could do with automation and effects, EQ plugins, okay? 
So that's really what I wanted to show you in kind of a basic demonstration. What's, what your task is is then to figure out how to make music with these repetitions and variations, okay, uh, using your sample plugins.